morning, flower friends. It's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm, and it's about 6.30 in the morning, 6.45 maybe. I just put the kids on the bus, and it is time to water the rows that I have, and I get so many questions about how I water. I don't use drip irrigation at this time. As you can see, I have gotten the two rows planted here. These rows are 95 feet long, and this first one is Snapdragons, and then the second one, Lizianthus. My friend Lisa came over and helped me with the snapdragons, but I ended up doing the Lizianthus by myself. So we're in the middle of a very hot stretch and I can see some damage on my snapdragons. Uh, it was about 80 degrees yesterday and they just didn't like it. So there is some sunburn on some of the plants, but they will be okay. Uh, the Lizianthus, however, looks like it fared a little bit better. Uh, which surprises me because the snapdragons have been out for longer than the lisianthus but i have a few that look like maybe they got a little bit of a sunburn um, but for the most part they look okay but i'm gonna water them this morning because we have another several days of about 80 degree weather which is abnormal for us but you can see like that that's not supposed to be white that is sunburn on the plant but it will just continue to grow up from the middle and it'll be fine. So this is how I water. These are 300 gallon food safe water tanks that we've had for a couple of years now. We do have it connected to the gutter system of our house, which is up there. Uh, but for this, we filled using our old dug well that's down the hill behind the house. We have like a 12 foot dug well and it's actually pretty full right now. So here is the well. So this is the old well that my father originally dug on the property way back in the 80s. So uh, this is uh, the pump and the pump is just underneath uh, that for weather. And this is a fire hose basically that goes into that part and then the pump turns on and then the red hose fills up and this is where Brad fills up. This goes right into the top of the tank. Yeah, that's a wide hose. It fills rather quickly. So that is where we filled the tanks, especially for the first time of the season when it's springtime and the creek is flowing. This is the cute little stream that runs behind the house. So basically it's, this is how big it is normally. It does get really wide actually when the snow melts, it gets probably three times as wide. In fact, all of this was underwater earlier after the snow melt. For perspective, this is the back of my house and this is down the hill. So Brad used a large pump, pumped the water out of the well and used the tractor and forks to bring these up here. We have these black covers on them so that algae does not grow on the inside and I don't think they're full. I wasn't here when he filled the tanks but I know when they're full they're a little bit heavy for the tractor. So I don't think they're full, but they do hold 300 gallons each. So this hose goes into the top and comes down here. And this is going to connect to a pump. So this is the pump that we use. It's small. I'll, I'll put a link to it in the description below. All you need is enough to get the water out of the tank and into the hose. And it hooks up to a battery. I leave the battery in the back of the Kubota because it's a little heavy and I don't want to carry it in and out. And this white cord is long enough to reach. Ooh, it started gurgling right away. Oh look, probably shouldn't do that until I have the hose hooked up. Let me do that first. So you see it starts working right away, which is the first time for me this season. So I forgot that little fact. Disconnect. So now I have to hook up my hose. Let's try this again, shall we? Whee! So 
in real time, it took me about 12 minutes to water both of these rows. So that's two 95 foot rows in 12 minutes. It allows me to keep an eye on the plants to spot any issues, any diseases or pests or anything. Maybe something needs to be pinched. Maybe something needs to be fertilized. It allows me to keep a close eye. So when I have this area fully planted, it would take me about an hour and a half to water. It's really bizarre to me that some varieties are completely unaffected by the crazy intense heat and then some varieties were basically fried but it's okay because <laughs> even if say this snapdragon doesn't make it because that's pretty severely fried it will grow from the bottom again so it's kind of like succession planting this one looks okay this one looks okay that one looks okay yeah it, but like something like this i mean that might not make it but we'll see anyway I think I have enough snapdragons that it'll be okay. I just wanted to show you guys how I water. Is this the best method to do it? Probably not. Drip irrigation. Obviously water growing directly to the root system is what you really want, but this is the way that I'm doing it right now because I do not have the capability to set up drip system at this time. I do plan on doing drip in the future. It's just, we're not there yet. Baby steps, baby steps on the farm. So I don't have to water very often. This is the first time that I'm watering out here this season because we do have like a six day stretch of really, really hot sun and no rain, which could be an issue, which is why I'm watering. And it's early in the morning. So these are not, I'm not worried about the plants burning from the water. In fact, the end of the row that I watered first is already dried up. So, and this is, this is a biodegradable film. It's made out of corn products. It's an organic film. It's called Bio 360. It's not, permeable so the water is not going through it it is sitting on top of it so there's a lot of reasons that I use this people ask me all the time why are you using that stuff number one it's weed prevention number two it does warm up the soil if you need it to so if you were looking to get a little bit warmer of a soil for say you know things that love the heat like celosia and zinnias and stuff like that it's, it's good to use for that it's also amazing for me because if it starts to rain too much it's going to limit the amount of rain rainfall that your plants get because I'm planting into small holes so all of the extra rain falls off to the side which last year we had I mean we had record rainfall in 2021 and my plants did not uh, flood out we had so many people with so many fungal diseases because of the amount of rain that we were getting but my plants seemed to be okay and I credit that to the Bio360 because all of that excess rain was falling off to the sides and not collecting around the roots of my plants. So this is how I water down here. Thanks for sticking around, we'll see you soon. Here we are, two magical rows. I'm gonna stop eating my Twizzler quick before I start talking. We actually expanded the area about 30%. So these are, I was able to fit seven rows here last year. I think we might be able to fit eight. And then over here, I had the dahlias in the front last year. We're not gonna do that this year. But, so now we'll have, instead of seven 75 foot rows here, I am gonna be able to fit, I'm hoping 14 95 foot rows just in this space here. So we, we're able to till it, roll it, compact it down. It does make it much smoother when using the bed maker. Somebody walked through here last night. It looks like a big old coyote. Yeah, a bit like a big one. Look at that. That's a big coyote. So the reason we were able to expand it so much is because Brad cleared out about 20 feet worth of dead trees and a little, oh, I'll show it right there. <laughs> All of that stuff was just growing around this tree in this massive rock. This rock is huge. 